And this guy, Mershon, didn't have the the chutzpah to tell that uh, Michael Cohen, you keep your mouth shut. I've gagged Donald Trump. I'm going to gag you. But this was tells the prosecution, can you please tell your witness that the court is telling him that he shouldn't be talking? And the prosecution comes in and they said, well, you know what, Judge, we've been telling him that. We tell all our witnesses to refrain from talking about the case. This is nonsense. This is the sickest thing I've ever heard. For that man to gag Donald Trump, a former president and someone running for president, and not gag Michael Cohen, who a federal judge called a serial liar, is so indicative of where this judge is coming from. Why would he do that? Because he wants to get a conviction, because he doesn't want Michael Cohen gagged, because he believes in destroying Donald Trump. Did you hear that? Judge Janine almost said that Judge Merchan doesn't have any balls. She almost said that on live television. I love it. And then she called the guy a wuss. You go, girl. In this clip that I'm going to show you today, she basically emasculates Judge Merchan. By the way, did you realize that not only was Donald Trump gagged, but Judge Merchan gagged everybody in his orbit? His press secretary, his lawyers, his staff, everybody basically associated with Trump are also gagged. I've never seen anything like this. I've talked to quite a few lawyers. They've never seen anything like this. This is an absolute railroad job. How can they be so afraid of one man? And it's obvious at this point that they know that Dementia Joe can't possibly be Donald Trump. Let's watch Judge Jeanine absolutely go off in this clip. And this guy, Mershon, didn't have the, the chutzpah to tell that uh, Michael Cohen, you keep your mouth shut. I've gagged Donald Trump. I'm going to gag you. But this was tells the prosecution, can you please tell your witness that the court is telling him that he shouldn't be talking? And oh, man, she's destroying this guy. If this guy had any integrity, he'd walk into court Monday and go, you know what, I I've heard from some people over the weekend, let's go ahead and just remove the gag order because people are looking at me like I got no nuts. The prosecution comes in and they said, well, you know what, Judge, we've been telling them that. We tell all our witnesses to refrain from talking about the case. This is nonsense. This is the sickest thing I've ever heard. For that man to gag Donald Trump, a former president and someone running for president, and not gag Michael Cohen, who a federal judge called a serial liar, is so indicative of where this judge is coming from. Why? Now understand, when Michael Cohen goes into court on Monday, this guy, he's not just carrying baggage. He's got like an in full trunk that he's got a lug behind him. Convicted felon, perjured himself. He's got a congressional subpoena and they're looking to indict him as well for lying in front of Congress. How can he possibly be a credible witness? How can anyone on that jury look at Michael Cohen as a credible person? Uh, never mind witness, credible person. I wouldn't believe him if he was selling a car to me. This guy is just a complete liar. And then he goes on TikTok. And I've got a theory. I want, I want to share a theory with you about this whole TikTok Michael Cohen thing and how he's making money. I think it's all BS. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little secret here. Just like with Hunter Biden and his artwork and how people were spending gazillions of dollars on his artwork that a kindergartner could do i think they find the most the best ways to launder money you know the whole thing with books and you know obama's book supposedly sold gazillion copies but nobody you know actually has one it's so easy to launder money through art when i say art I mean painting, I mean books, I mean going on TikTok. Nobody knows where this money is coming from. I hope if Trump gets elected that he goes into TikTok before they ban it and finds out where Michael Cohen's money is coming from. Think about this for a second. If Michael Cohen goes on TikTok and he says, donate money to me. Number one, I don't know where he's got subscribers and fans from because there just can't possibly be that many people interested in what a liar and a serial perjurer has to say. So let's just say he's got these supposed subscribers and fans and now they're donating money to him. Let's say you work, you know, with a certain group of people on the left who want to, you know, basically channel some money to you. How easy would it be for, you know, I don't know, say 20 people to get in front of their phones 
or their computers and just keep hitting the donate button. And there's a credit card tied to it in Switzerland or something. And they're hitting 100, 100, 100, 1,000, 500, 200, 100. Nobody knows who these people are. They're fake profiles. It's so easy to, to create fake profiles. You can create a bank of phones. One person could basically set up 50 or 100 different profiles. Now let's say these profiles are all tied to the same credit card and you're just banging that button, donating a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks at a pop. Nobody knows where that money's coming from. This is the easiest money laundering scam ever invented. We're going to let you get on TikTok, a Chinese app, and we're going to let you donate money to Michael Cohen, and it's completely anonymous. Oh, you're saying, Barry, well, you know, they've got the records. Who? TikTok? TikTok has the records? L let me see what you're going to do if you want to go and find out how Michael Cohen's been getting money given to him, and you have to subpoena TikTok, who... Our Congress is trying to ban and see what how long it takes you to get those records. Meanwhile, Michael Cohen hits deposit once a day, has that money dumped into his account, and he's scot-free. I understand that's all supposition. It's not misinformation. It's not, not disinformation. It's an opinion. It's my thought. And it's my thought after seeing so many scams go crazy. Half a million dollars for a piece of art that my young granddaughter could do. Million copies of a book that no one's reading and nobody's checking who's buying this stuff on Amazon. When's the last time you've heard of a congressional or even a legal investigation to anyone's book sales? No one ever talks about it. It's the biggest scam going. How about even this way? What if you wrote a book on your own, you didn't even go through a major publisher, you posted that book on Amazon, and all of a sudden you sold, you know, half a million copies at 20, 25 bucks a piece. Who's gonna know? Who's gonna know who paid for it? Oh, some guy named Bob Jones in Oklahoma bought this book. Oh, okay, that, that's as far as anyone is gonna go. But no one's even looking that far. It hits the New York Times bestseller list. I'm like, well, who's buying this crap? I don't know. So understand, with Michael Cohen going on TikTok every night and generating money every single night, hundreds and thousands of dollars, who's giving it to him? Do you understand what the average age of a TikTok user is? These people don't care about Trump. They don't care about Hillary Clinton. They definitely don't care about an old dementia Joe. But you think they're giving money to Michael Cohen, who they don't even have any idea who he is? Why would anybody, and just think about it, why would anybody, why would anybody be donating money to Michael Cohen? Cohen. For what reason? I mean, I never ask for money on my streams. I, I, I love it when people do donate and provide me a tip. I absolutely love it. Wink, wink. But I just don't understand why they're giving Michael Cohen tons of money just to go on TikTok every every night. And, and then you have to think, why did he pick? There's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's YouTube, there's Twitter. Twitter, he could say whatever he wants and nobody would bother him. Why did he go on TikTok to basically badmouth Trump and get donation. I'm not making any conclusions. I'm trying to get you to ask your own questions. Question in your mind. What the heck is going on here? All right, so let's get back to Janine here because she just goes off. Why would he do that? Because he wants to get a conviction, because he doesn't want Michael Cohen gagged, because he believes in destroying Donald Trump. Think about what I just said. He doesn't want Michael Cohen gagged. He wants Michael Cohen to continue what he's doing on TikTok. You think maybe someone talked to Judge Merchan and said, let the guy go? We, we need him to go and continue basically begging for money on TikTok? Who does it benefit if Michael Cohen is being paid off? If Michael Cohen is making a million dollars, like Stormy Daniels made a million dollars, and this money is all changing hands, just like the protesters at the college campuses, somebody is behind all of these people getting paid. There's a reason why all these people are getting paid. And I was in that courtroom today, and another one of the players came in, Alvin Bragg, and he was sitting there stuck next to his bodyguard speaking speaking of getting paid i want you if you're interested to go look up alvin bragg's net worth and while you're at it look up letitia james's net worth tell me how alvin bragg a civil servant a, a prosecutor in manhattan is worth 40 million dollars yeah i said that i i not a misspeak 40 
million dollars. This guy just got elected a couple years ago after Trump got, got elected. Then he was told to go after Trump. And now he's sitting on a war chest of $40 million? How's it happening? I don't know. He didn't have to use TikTok, that's for sure. He just, you know, he got elected and someone told him to go after Trump. And now he's sitting on $40 million. Don't believe me? Go look it up. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? This DA has the the brass to come into the courtroom. She almost said it balls again. And oversee this case that is an expired misdemeanor for which there's no truth to begin <laughs> with. And do you know how many hundreds of defendants are in jail because they can't make bail mm -hmm. when their cases, violent cases, murders, rapes, violent felonies are still pending because of the COVID delay? Shh. You're not supposed to say that word. You're not supposed to even pretend that that even happened. That all these criminal cases, and including some of the newcomer cases and what they've done, are all pending, but we had to push Trump to the front of the list. Makes sense. No, he's coming in to make sure he convicts Donald Trump. He's going to make sure that Mershon is the judge that he wants, that he shuts Trump up and he doesn't shut up Michael Cohen. I mean, this is the this is bizarre. And I was, I was a DA just like Bragg. I mean, I've done this for 32 years. I love that she said that. She qualified herself. Nobody else out there, not me, not probably you, not a lot of people can say I've been a judge or prosecutor for 32 years. I know the ins and outs of prosecution. I've had these clients come before me. I've adjudicated these kinds of cases. No. Nobody's adjudicated this type of case because there is no case. Remember, and I keep wanting you to remember, there is no crime shown yet. They're still waiting to tie in Michael Cohen to show there is a crime. As of right now, I don't care if he was doing Stormy Daniels upside down and backwards, there's no crime. This is a charade and the idea that you have a courtroom, Sean, where I sat on that bench with a flag of the United States and a flag of New York State and the seal of New York and above that and God we trust with a bunch of players in a theater <laughs> of the absurd is just stunning. Theater of the absurd. I love that she gets hot because it tells me she's passionate about what she doing what she's doing and i think a lot more people and i guess we're going to see that at the, the rally in wildwood people need to get riled up this is where we are in this country right now it's always been the people on the left who get to go ahead and protest and scream and do whatever they want now it's time legally and peacefully for the right people to get up and put their their feelings out there and say we're done we're, we're done with this bs you know you, you sat in the courtroom judge and and you've been on both sides of this here all the salacious she had to take a deep breath testimony is it not all irrelevant is it all not immaterial it's was she irrelevant. not caught in a, well, was she not caught in a lie when she said my main motivation was my safety but then the tape was played in the courtroom and here's what i like to understand Last oh by the way in that tape her attorney her attorney was saying that she desperately wanted this money she was worried that if he if they didn't get the money early and he didn't get elected that the value of her you know statements and books and whatever else were going to be completely diminished she definitely wanted the money That's the important question analyze yeah. this as, as best you can mm -hmm. what is the other charge if if we have a bookkeeping error which is a misdemeanor under New York law, the statute of limitations have run out. Okay, what is the other charge? Because not one lawyer I've interviewed can tell me. I don't know either. That's why I'm telling you this is a theater of the absurd. The reason why she doesn't know, the reason why you don't know, the reason why Hannity doesn't know, the reason why I don't know, is because Alvin Bragg hasn't told anybody. It's not written anywhere. You're having a trial and you haven't said what the crime is. That's not being made up. Nobody knows what this crime is. And let's assume they took a federal charge to bootstrap it into a felony. He doesn't have jurisdiction mm -hmm. as a federal prosecutor. The judge doesn't have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Alvin Bragg doesn't have jurisdiction. This is so political. I, I, I just I just can't believe it. I kept saying they have to believe in something. And, and that's what we all have to hang our hat on. At this point, we have to believe somewhere in those 12 people sitting on that jury, somebody has some integrity. Somebody has to say to themselves, I, I hate, I may not like, I may oppose Trump, but I, I have some personal integrity. I just can't just 
rubber stamp this. I, I, I just don't understand it because there's no crime. And I know they did all the tawdry, salacious stuff and said what he did and what he should have did and what he could have did and how she said this and she said that. But none of it is proven. In fact, they've shown there are two documents that she signed where she said nothing happened. So you already have conflicting information in front of you as a jury. As a jury, you're going to get instructions at the end and there's something called reasonable doubt. If you're listening to Stormy Daniels and you're about to listen to Michael's, Michael Cohen and after all of this you don't have a, a shred of doubt? You don't, you, there's no possible way you can sit back and go, yeah, this without a doubt, without a doubt, um, there's a crime that's been committed that we don't know about, but there's a crime. That's how bad it is. This reasonable doubt alone should make you go, this doesn't make any sense. You haven't shown me any proof. Proof, remember, you're innocent until proven guilty. They haven't proven anything. And they're going to rely on Michael Cohen to come in and basically lie to make whatever kind of case they can make. It's, it's absolutely nuts. There is nothing. There is nothing here. And that jury is sitting there and all they did was listen to testimony. None of it put a finger on Donald Trump, but they got enough hate and dirt mm. and some woman who lies down for a living <laughs> to try to convince them that Donald Trump is a bad man. Shame on all of them. Yeah. No doubt. Shame on every single person associated with this prosecution that is now a persecution. You can't deny at this point that the fix is in. And the reason that all of this is happening is because you can just look at Wildwood and what's going on there today to realize they can't stop what's coming. And here's a little indication of that. In 2020, Biden won New Jersey by 17 points. As of today, Biden is ahead, if you believe the polls, by just five points. Trump has narrowed the gap tremendously. He has obviously put New Jersey in play. And I have to believe at this point that New York is in play as well. Let me know what you think about Trump getting stronger from all of this lawfare. It's unbelievable. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.